This video is going to cover how we can write a scraper to use a website to generate data to fine tune and train a machine learning model. And we'll be looking at autonomous AI agents, which can intuit their own steps to making that task possible without our intervention. Now, the context for this is I was listening to the Hard Fork podcast and they were talking about a company that builds autonomous agents to scrape other websites, steal all their keyword data, and then flood the internet with blog posts, keywords stuffed with SEO to steal the traffic from that original website. So I wanted to find out where that was mentioned and Hartford does not have a transcript. So it's not easy for me to search like, oh yeah, what were they talking about? What was the company? I'm going to use my app, which was built exactly for this purpose to transcribe the episode so that I can search it and ask questions about it. But I'm also going to demonstrate building a web scraper that does exactly what Hartford was discussing, which scrapes my website and generates a bunch of data. So start up my server here for PodQuest, and then I'm going to start up my scraper and it's going to really quickly execute this scraping script that I wrote, which runs Puppeteer, a library for scraping and testing, points it at my website, in this case, just local host, because I'm running it locally. And it's going to search for the name hard fork. And then I've got it programmed to just grab the first slash newest episode. So let's go ahead and run that. You can see it opens up a window, types in hard fork. It takes the first match. It grabs the first episode. What's next for OpenAI? Now it is transcribing the episode. And if I actually go to my database here, I see that episode. So we know it worked. You can see how if I were to modify this script to pass it a list of podcasts, you could just completely automate the process of grabbing this information. And because PodQuest stores this data, if I were to run this myself as a human user, finds out that we've already got an existing transcript and I can download it. There it is. So I essentially can possess this data and all I would need to do is modify my scraper to click this download button and pass it an array of essentially all the podcasts I wanted data for potentially all the podcasts that are available on RSS on major platforms, I could very easily create a duplicate offering to my service. So I'm going to show you how I built this scraper. And just to get real meta, I wanted to see if I could generate the code for the scraper with ChatGPT. This was my question to ChatGPT. I said, I'm a web developer who programs in JavaScript, Node.js. I need to repeatedly fill out a web form on a single page app, et cetera, et cetera. Here is the format you can expect for the data that I'm going to pass you. And then I give it the steps. Click the first select button on the page, populate the name field, select the first matching result, generate the code necessary to run the scraper. So ChatGPT gives me a great response. First of all, it tells me I need to install Puppeteer. And then it gives me the code to build the scraper. Now, this code needed a fair bit of work, but at any rate, I was able to adapt that code to build a working scraper within a few hours. So we're going to go through that code just to see how that's done. Oh, but first let's look at PodQuest to see if we can get an answer to a question about this company that was stealing SEO. So um, who was the person that was stealing SEO from another company? So it searches the transcript. It tells us it was Jake Ward. So let's find out how he did it. How did Jake Ward steal the other company's SEO? So there you go. We have the ability to query a transcript to answer questions about things we might not have remembered from the podcast. But the point of this video is just to show you how to do the same thing, scrape and create a replica of the content from this site. By the way, just for context, if you want to see what they said about this in Hard Fork. Uh, this story came from... Uh, a content marketer named Jake Ward. His company stole 3.6 million in total traffic from a competitor. They downloaded basically a list of all of the articles on the site. They then used an AI writing platform to kind of paraphrase an entire website. Plagiarize might be another word people would use, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yes. So I'm trying to understand both how this is done and what the gray area is that makes automation okay or not okay. Okay, so enough preamble. Here is the code that ChatGPT gave me. We'll use this to kind of get a base understanding of the scraper, and then I'll show you the code that I ended up with and the differences between the two. 
So it's importing Puppeteer, which is a library that allows you to run a headless browser to essentially write code to browse a website versus have to browse it yourself. So I'm bringing in the Puppeteer library, and then I'm running this function fill form. It launches a browser, it creates a new browser page, goes to the web page URL that we specify, and it's telling us, okay, yeah, you find whatever the class name for your select button, and then click it, and then wait for the input field to show up. So it's smart enough to know that this is probably not going to be on screen at the moment, but when it becomes available, place that input field value with our podcast name. So again, our podcast name was here. It says the Joe Rogan experience. We substituted that with hard fork. And then it's going to wait for the results to come in. Uh, assuming we do have a result, we click that result and then it'll bring up an episode. We pick the first episode and then it's telling us, yeah, wait for a success message and then click the home icon on the page so that we can repeat the same process. Once that's all done, close the browser and we're good to go. So that's what ChatGPT gave me based on the instructions I gave it. Now let's look at the code we ended up with. So I've just done a diff here that shows us the differences between the two versions of code. It was using the require syntax to bring in the Puppeteer library. I'm bringing in the Puppeteer library via import. And then I had to write this whole function here called MUI select option. And the reason I had to do that was because I'm using Material UI to stylize my dropdowns. And what Material UI does is it dumps a fake select button over the browser native select button. So we had to write some special code to translate that fake button event down to the real selector. Uh, otherwise, this would have been super easy. I'm running it in non-headless mode so we can see what's happening. Obviously, I've replaced the URL. And then here is where I'm customizing those selectors for the select button. So if we look at our web page, this is the select button that we are after. Now it's inside this card. And you can see, in addition to all the garbage that Material UI puts in there is the class name that I actually gave it, mode select card. If we look at our component mode selector, there's that class name, mode select card. So that's the only class name I'm passing it. The rest is being injected via Material UI. So you can see a lot of this is me just replacing the selectors that ChatGPT gave me with the proper ones. Here's where I'm calling that custom function for the dropdown. I call it again for the next dropdown that we get for the episode. This one's for the podcast. And I'm just adding a, some additional logging to say like, hey, we're selecting this. That way, if I do run this in headless mode, at least the console is giving me a record of what's happening. So I know if something fails. Continuing down, again, we replace the podcast name from Joe Rogan Experience to Hard Fork. And we're just calling the fill form function. So not a lot of difference here, just mostly a little bit of debugging and selector adjustment from the code that ChatGPT gave us. Let's say we did actually want to modify our script to click this download transcript button. Here's that button. It's got all the material UI class name stuff, but we want to give it a custom class name so it'll be easy to find. So let me go into my code. Here's my React component with the button to download the transcript. And we'll just give it a class name. And then we'll just modify our scraper code to reflect that. Download transcript button. Save it, run our scraper. And you can see we downloaded the file. Now let's say we wanted to do that for another podcast. Well, what do we do? We just copy this and add that podcast name. So let's try this scraper again. And there we go. It's downloaded two transcripts. So you can see how if we had a list of all kinds of different podcasts, we could just get a ton of data. And if you watch one of my other videos, I use a couple of tools, off-the-shelf tools. Uh, this one's showing Bardeen that allow you to very easily go in to a website 
and scrape by just selecting elements on the page and writing this sort of scraping script with a graphical user interface. So instead of writing code, you use this. PodQuest was a little more difficult. You couldn't do this with Bardeen, but uh, I would not be surprised if you can do that soon. So I'm telling it, okay, here's the list. Here's the links. Here's the episodes. Click them. Get the URL. And that would be what I need to just populate this array here with potentially thousands of podcasts. So in a future video, I'm going to show you what I might do with all that data in order to fine tune a model to train it on podcast transcripts. But for now, let's look at autonomous agents. These are things that can determine their own steps to take given your instructions to a large language model. So you use human language and you say, hey, this is what I want to do. And the AI intuits what tools it should use, what steps it should take to solve the problem, and can do this without you writing a step-by-step -step list of instructions on how to get the job done. So this is AutoGPT. It's an open source code repo for creating autonomous agents. I'll put some links into the documentation for how to get started with it. And here is the GitHub repo. Now, AutoGPT allows you to make agents. And they recently had a hackathon and awarded the best agent to an agent called Evo.ninja. And Evo.ninja made a website where you can play around with their agent, but you can create your own as well. So here we are on the website for the autonomous agent. And I'm just going to, as broadly as possible, ask it to generate a list of episode names of top podcasts. So get the names of the most recent podcasts for the top 50 podcasts on Spotify right now. It runs a search and it decides on its own that it should use a web scraper. And so it assumes the agent persona of researcher, which has all the instructions for scraping a website. Okay, so it takes its first action, which is a web search. Top 50 podcasts on Spotify 2023. It shows us the actual function call that it makes, where here is the query. And the result is 10 Spotify podcasts that come back. So it knows it's not done because we told it to generate episodes for the top 50. So it's going to try a different action. It adds the word list. And it looks like it gets a list of 25 back. So it knows it's still incomplete. So it's going to try again, changes the query yet again, full list of top 50, only gets 10, keeps trying. It says, okay, this needs to be done in order to achieve the user's goal. So we haven't written the output file yet. And it just says, I give up. I was unable to find a complete list of the top 50 podcasts. So our request was too broad and we need to provide some additional instruction to this agent. So I've run another query here where I am more explicit, and this is what I said. I want to generate a list of podcast episodes and the name of the podcast they came from. The data should be in this format, and I give it a format where you loop through all the podcasts and their corresponding episodes to generate the data. I'd like you to retrieve as many of the top 50 podcasts as possible and get a list of the most recent five episode titles. If you can't find an episode title, consider yourself done searching for that podcast and move on to the next. If you can't find any more of the top 50 podcasts, you've already found the episode titles for the podcast you have, consider the job done. And this time, it goes through a similar search. It's still hitting those dead ends, so it's got like 35 this time. And then it changes the year to 2022, and it gets back uh, 25 more. And I'm not actually sure what the differentiator is here, but it's decided in this step to move on to the episode titles, which is great. So it's doing a web search for recent episodes of each of these top podcasts. Looks like it got back two for Joe Rogan, December 14th and November 23rd. So that's good. There's uh, recent information as we're recording on December 18th. And it's just going down the line here for all these different podcasts. And then it's determined it has enough to gather the necessary information to generate the desired JSON output. So it 
calls this write file function. We see our JSON. It says goal has been achieved and saved in the file podcast data.json. So we can download that file. And so you can see our various podcasts. They're not in order, it looks like, because we don't see Joe Rogan in here, which was number one on our list. But it does have episode titles it's indicated where they're missing. And interestingly, it looks like it's left out Joe Rogan like entirely, even Joe though it did find entirely, a couple of episodes. It did find a couple of episodes. Has left out a lot of the podcasts as well. Left out a lot of the podcasts as well. If we were to count these, it looks like we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like seven podcasts, and then their related episodes. So it's not bad. It's given us something to work with. And if we're not too particular, if we're just trying to build up a knowledge base, this is a decent attempt. And we could continue to modify either our agent or the prompt to the agent to try and improve our results here. So how would we do that? We're not going to create an agent in this video, but let's just look at the repo and see the steps involved. And we'll cover building an agent in another video. It has this section on if forging your own agent. It has a link to getting started with Forge. Shows you how to set up your environment, clone the repo, create an agent and run the agent. So what is an agent? It consists of these four things. The profile of the agent, which is its personality, its demographic, its methodology for generating responses. Then it's short and long-term memory and the formats that it can understand. Then it's its planning phase, which are the different reasoning methods it will apply to try and solve your problem. And then there's the actual actions it takes to complete the tasks. So it goes through and describes all of those things here and how they combine. And then it goes on to describe Forge itself, which is the AutoGPT library and syntax and protocol for building an agent, which consists of these various files, agent.py, our set of prompts, and the SDK itself. So we've got these large language model-based agents and their respective profiles, memory, planning, and action, the protocol that they follow, and AutoGPT Forge itself. So how do we make an agent's logic? We specify a task, we specify the steps that it will take, and as a tutorial, they're teaching an agent to just print to file the word Washington. Let me show you how to do that, how to interact with the agent, how to create different abilities, fetch web pages, which we did a lot in our example, and then they have a section on maintaining memory, both short-term and long-term. That's the anatomy of an agent. We'll actually go through those steps in a different video, but you can see if you combine the ability to scrape websites and the sort of natural and persistent intelligence of these autonomous agents, you could set these bots to all sorts of tasks with minimal involvement from you. In fact, you could see how we could use AutoGPT to perform our very own SEO heist. I mean, there's basically nothing I love more than a heist story in general. And once you tell me it's a search engine optimization heist, well, let's just say you've got my full attention, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> yeah, new sequel to the Italian job just dropped. Anyway, that's all for this video. Check out the links and code posted alongside the video. And stay tuned for the next one where we'll build our own agent. Thanks.